This is the Hitachi C50-F550P, a 50-inch CRT rear projection television. It has a 4x3 aspect ratio. This is the manual. You can see there are some other models. There's what appears to be two 43-inch models. This is the matching remote, the Hitachi CLE-950, two double A's from memory. We have an input down here, composite left and right audio and S video headphone jack. And there's also a button for the magic focus, which I imagine is a convergence feature in this television that we will explore when we actually power it on going around the back fairly heavy duty construction this thing weighs 103 kilos much heavier than i expected rather than having a plastic back it's all chipboard that's certainly going to increase the weight going down there's our power cord wrapped up hardwired in rf a few composites in and out s video as expected and the important component that's where we really want to see what this thing can do. And hopefully it's not a 100 hertz set. There's our labels. Hitachi, Palsy Cam NTSC, made in Malaysia, not the good old Japan. The other side. And on the front, we have the power switch, status LED and a few buttons to control the television. Let's have a look inside if we can get in easily. There's a lot of screws to get through this thing. Right, I managed to get this back panel off, which is quite easy and, and intended to be taken off. However, this back, this back section here, despite being fully unscrewed, is rock solid. I'm not sure how to get it off. I'd like to see if the mirror is glass or if it's foil get a closer look at the CRTs, but I can't get it off. Twentieth of the 606. I'm surprised that it is not widescreen by the year 2006. Isn't that strange? Our tuner board, RF tuner board is quite big. Quite big, but very vacant in parts. It's probably used to be adapted for different countries in the world. That green board down on the bottom there's the brains of the operation, whereas we go over here, power and deflection and things like that. Another board just sitting in there, but to get to get into it, into the body of it, is you can see the necks of the tube deep with inside. But I can't, I can't get in there. When you can't go in the back go via the front. The front panel pulls off, revealing this other panel here that's had the screws removed except for the top two, slide that up and off, and then you've got better access to the tubes. I still can't identify what brand the tubes are. And there's also a control there, focus and screen voltage. You can, a big bank to control each of the three tubes here at the front. That's nice and handy. I'm sure you can take the bezel and everything off as well, but I might leave that for another time. As mentioned earlier, the magic focus button adjusts convergence. I've just pressed it and it's gonna go through a sequence of what it does and it lasts about 30 or 40 seconds going through red, going through green, going through blue. It does its own thing. If you bought the TV new and you took it home, put it in its final spot, then you do this calibration process. Even if you just move it around a bit to a new location in your house, you do it again. You can do it anytime you want by pressing that magic focus button. The bar's progressed almost to the end and it's ready to go. There is one more trick with the magic focus button and the manual points this out. It doesn't want the end user to do this but it probably realizes that it wouldn't be hard for the end user to accidentally do this. If you hold the magic focus button down for three seconds, 
it'll, it'll start as normal, but then it'll go to this different, this static mode, center mode. And that's actually for service technician to adjust convergence. I don't have any instructions on how this is performed, but I think you can just exit it by pressing magic focus again to get out like that. To get into the service menu, you should have the television on with the green light. Then you turn it off, not with a remote, turn it off with the power button at the front of the TV. Then hold the TV video button. You keep holding it, then press the power on. Still holding the TV video button, you've got to hold it for a few seconds. Keep holding it. And there you go. The service menu has come up. It's somewhat cryptic. That is that all of the all of the items are, are numbered. They're only they're numbered by numbers. They're not actually what the function is. So it's not like oh, number four is clearly stated as horizontal position. You need to consult the service manual to know what each of the numbers do. And it goes up quite high too. It goes up to about yeah, like nearly 200 settings that can be changed. Like so. And I don't have the service manual as such. So I can't really go into that too deeply at all. If you want to get out, you can just press menu and you're out like that. As far as the menu system of the television, it's not all that different to a direct view CRT. It's got all the adjustments, presets, contrast, brightness. It's probably color, maybe sharpness or tint. There is another uh, super contrast. You can have the color temperature there selected. Warm, cool, normal, nothing too extraordinary at all. Sound, picture in picture. So it's pretty standard for the regular menu anyway. I have to say, I'm not unimpressed. I know rear projection has a bad reputation. And I'm not gonna say it's anything unbelievable, but these reds are fairly popping on the screen right now. I'm playing here in my shed at night time. I've got fluorescent lights on, but I don't have any annoying daytime sunlight interfering. I'm sitting back a good couple meters. I've got a fairly good sweet spot to look at the thing from. The camera's picking it up pretty well. I must say, I'm, I am somewhat impressed with it. A PAL NES is connected via composite to the TV. This is a light gun test now. Let's make it a little harder. Let's go with game B, two ducks. Perfect. Now it's time for a Sega Saturn in this video via NTSC. I can't help the strange name that this game has. I found with this light gun on the Saturn here in the, on this TV, 
that you really need to keep the gun straight. You can't tilt it too much. You have to keep it straight and then lower it down to where you want to shoot for best response. Do not be surprised. I am Yanoza, the spirit of travel. I will join you on this adventure for a while. Seems to work pretty good, but again, if you want to shoot low, you've really got to move the gun down. Not bad, not bad. As you can imagine, the sound on this can go very, very loud. It's not even halfway. crank and sound system. Alright, let's see what this thing can do. Let's go to display setting. Go to non-interlace. Basically 240p. That looks fine. Working as expected. Don't expect progressive to work. No. Yeah, we'll try the other progressive with scan lines, but no, nah, no go there either. Back to non interlace. Now I have a Xbox 360 connected via component. It should be in 576i with Super Street Fighter 4 Arcade Edition. That grid is actually pretty square and straight. I haven't done any adjustments whatsoever to the television. This is how it's come to me. Who knows how many hours it's done in the past. It doesn't seem to have any burn in and it still emits brightness at a very high rate, which I don't recommend on the rear projection, but it seems to have a lot of life left in it. The purities something that's actually quite a bit harder to tell because 
The weakness of rear projection is that light uniformity is not uniform to the eye. The corners are appearing dark. You can see that it's bright in the center, but it's not as bright to the naked eye as, as it is on camera. But nevertheless, it makes probably adjusting purity a bit tricky, but then again, we're talking about rear projection with three separate tubes, so purity might be a different, might be a whole different ball game with a setup like this, but the colors look good. The geometry is good. The convergence it, it is out down in the bottom right horizontally a little bit, a little bit. But this thing is looking better than a lot of CRTs I've seen in the past. A lot of the reviews I've done lately, this thing actually tops it. It doesn't have the blacks though. It doesn't have the black, uh, the blacks of a CRT. It's sort of illuminated and makes them a bit grey, but all in all, I'd, I'd probably go maybe for this over an LCD, to be honest, because you've got that smooth motion of CRT rather than that blurry crap of LCD. I say, don't knock it until you try it. This has passed my expectations, not that they were super high to begin with, but gives me some hope that there is place for rear projection. If you had a big games room, this might be a nice little addition Everyone likes to get lots of CRTs, but maybe a rear projection tucked in, well not tucked, but placed somewhere it could be a good addition to your games room. I haven't seen many rear projections to compare this one to, but I'm gonna keep it for now, unless I find some better stuff out there. So give them a try, give the rear projection a try, and let's see if we can find some good ones. I wish it had SCAR, that's the only other thing I really wish this thing would have, but at least it's component, not 100 hertz, gun compatible works pretty well. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more, hopefully more rear projection sets to come.